to use your working at your own pace, making sure that nothing is causing pain or discomfort as in joint pain. Muscular discomfort in Italian after you, if you need to stop and stretch, stop and stretch whenever you need. If you can keep it going, keep it going for as long as you can. Making sure that you've got a band and a pillow or wall to work a little resistance into the arms, into the legs, a little assist them into the assistance, into the arms, into the legs. And then when you're ready, set in your starting position. The same as usual, if you're lying down, it's in the mat to help you relax into the floor. Allowing the arms to come down the side, turning the palms to face up to the ceiling. If you sit, it's trying to sit up a little bit straighter, a little bit more lifted at the front. So preventing the ribcage from crushing down onto the belly and then preventing that nice, relaxed belly breath. So making sure that I'm giving space for the diaphragm to be able to descend and ascend to create that breath. So noticing if you're stiffening through the neck, collarbones of the chest, to see if I can soften and relax it throughout. And then do, do the usual scan of the body. Noticing the pressure on the seat bones. If I'm seated, am I putting the same weight on my right or my left side? Am I slightly tipping backwards? Am I slightly tipping forward? Are the legs in the same position? If I'm laying down, feel the pressure across the back, across the hips. Is it the same? Is the position of the right arm the same as the left? Is the position of the left leg the same as the right? I'm not trying to change anything. Just noticing where everybody, where everything is and how it feels. And then as I feel the practice a little bit calmer, the body feels a little bit more settled, a little bit more relaxed, I'm going to start focusing on the shoulder girdle. I'm going to start shrugging the shoulders up to the head and then I'm going to depress them, press them down in the way. So think of shortening the neck, as so pulling the shoulders up to your ears and then lengthening the neck as much as I can. So I'm going to shorten it, shrugging the shoulders up, and then lengthening, pressing the shoulders down. I'm gluing the back of the shoulder, the shoulder blades from the back of the rib, you see if I can create a nice and smooth slide up and down. Five. Four. Three, two, last one. I'm going to depress the shoulders and then keeping the shoulders depressed. So a nice so long neck. I'm going to start protracting and retracting. So I'm going to pull the shoulders forward as if I was trying to bring them together at the front and then squeeze them together at the back. So I'm going to pull them forward and then push them behind. So as I did for the elevation depression, <clears throat> making sure that I'm not stiffening through the neck. So keeping the neck loose, keeping the neck relaxed, so just this time, picturing the shoulder blades moving towards the side of the rib cage as I protract, and then towards the center of the spine as I retract them. Again, comparing right and left to side, one shoulder might feel as if it's sliding better. The movement might feel a bit stickier on one side or a lot easier on one side than the other. I'm always going to focus on the stiffer one or the one that doesn't feel as smooth, that doesn't feel as light. Five. <clears throat> Four. Three, two, last one, from the front to the back and releasing back to the middle, adjusting the shoulders, giving the shoulder a little roll, resetting the shoulders and the back of the ribcage. Now that the shoulder blades feels a little bit more mobile, <laughs> it's gliding a little bit better, I'm going to start focusing on the arm. 
one arm at a time. I'm just going to focus on the right arm. I'm going to start raising the arm up to the front and then I'm going to take it back as far as the shoulder will allow me to, just making sure that I'm not forcing that lift. Then I'm going to ease that arm back and then I'm going to try again. Same arm, same movement. I'm going to raise it up to and release it down. And then as I keep the movement going, however small or big the movement is, see if you can notice the neck and the jaw, making sure that the neck doesn't string up, it doesn't start feeling stiff, it doesn't start feeling tense on the side. The jaw is nice and relaxed. Five. Four. Three, so picturing the arm dropping into the shoulder socket. Two. <clears throat> Last one, and releasing back. Relaxing the shoulder, the same thing to the right side, to the left side. So I'm going to raise the arm up to the front. I'm going to reach it up from behind as far as I can, and then I'm going to let it come back. And then the same as I did on the first side, just noticing, noticing the neck. Because do I feel tension into the neck? Am I leaning to the side to lift the arm, especially if I'm seated, that the arm is heavier as I'm lifting it against the gravity. So the lifter feels harder. See if I can try and find the movement that is not creating tension into my upper body. It's a nice loose, it's a nice and smooth movement. Four. Three. Two. Last one. And release it back, relaxing the shoulder, releasing the arm. So it's a little bit more movement. I'm going to start changing the direction slightly. So in the next one, I'm going to go back to the right arm, and then I'm going to go for a little lateral raise. So I'm going to scoot the arm around the side and towards the head, and then I'm going to take it back down. Changing the angle of the shoulders, making sure that there is no clicking, there is no grinding. And then exactly the same as you did for that front raise, notice, if you're exaggerating the tension, so am I fighting to lift the arm? Can I make the movement a little bit smaller and just a little bit more relaxed? So the neck doesn't feel as if it's tensing too much. I'm not leaning in the opposite direction. I'm not compensating. I'm just trying to get some movement in the shoulder joint. Four. Three, two, last one, and releasing back, relaxing the shoulder, releasing the arm, I'm going to repeat the same thing to the left. Just keeping the arm round at the side, bringing it towards the head, and then taking it back down. So same as I did on the right side, just making sure that it's not grinding, I'm not tensing, I'm not forcing the movement, playing with the position of the arm, bringing it slightly forward to the body line, see if I can find a smoother or a better combination between the top of the arm and the shoulder socket. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. And releasing back, relaxing the shoulder, releasing the arm, and then I'm going to See if I can start combining the directions together. So I'm going to start getting into circles. So I'm going to go back to the right arm. I'm going to start raising the arm up to the front. And then I'm going to circle around the side to come back. 
So I'm going to raise it up to the front and then circle around the side to come back. So especially as you change the direction of the movement, see if you can play with the position of your hand and your forearm. Again, turning the hand, turning the palm, turning the forearm slightly, see if I can affect the top of the arm too, creating a smooth transition. So nothing, again, clicks, grinds, or create pain. Five. <clears throat> Four. <coughs> Three. Two. Last one. Relaxing the arm down, repeating the same thing to the left. So I'm going to raise it up to the front and then circle around the side to come back, up to the front and then circle around the side to come back. So same as I did for the individual direction with the individual movement. See if I can try and find a smooth movement. So again, I'm not forcing, I'm not trying too hard, I'm not tensing. I want to keep it as relaxed as I possibly can. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. And releasing back, releasing the shoulder, relaxing the arm. It's a little bit more movement. I'm going to try again to the right side, and this time changing the direction. So I'm going to scoop the arm around the side to lift, and then I'm going to circle around the front to come back. So I'm going to go around the side to lift and then to the front to come back. Three, four, five, six, having a little rest in between if you feel that the arm starts getting a little bit heavy. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. And release and relaxing the arm down. Same thing to the left side. So scooping the arm round the side and towards the head, and then back to the front to come down. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six, still checking that the neck feels relaxed. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. And releasing back, raising the shoulder, relaxing the arms, a little bit more movement into the shoulder joint. I'm going to start to free around the thoracic, around the middle. So if you grab hold of your band, and then wear the band as if you're wearing a belt. So I'm just going to put it around the waist, so it should be right to level with the belly button. And then I'm going to put a little, little knot or a little bow to keep it in place. So it doesn't matter if it stretches or not. It's just to give a little bit more awareness. So right around the middle, right around the waist. 
setting the arms in a comfortable position and then see if you can focus on the breath. We're going to do 10 belly breaths. So what I want you to think about is imagine to be expanding all the way around the back of the strap. So not just to the front, but to the side and to the back too. So I'm going to try and open up all the way around the middle. So I'm going to inhale, I'm going to expand out. Exhale, I'm going to relax. Two. Three. Relaxing the shoulders, softening the throat. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. Then easing your way back to the middle, <laughs> we're going to change the position of the spine. So instead of keeping in you for keeping center, keeping to the middle, I'm going to go into a little rotation. So if you're lying down, Clasping the hand, we're keeping the hands apart. I'm going to swing the arms to the right. I'm going to rotate to the right and fold it that way. If I'm seated, I'm going to turn to the right as far as I can and then stay in there, same as before. So you can get that expansion around the back. Inhaling one, exhaling two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine. Ten. Then easing your way back to the middle and then rotating to the left. Holding the rotation and then again, see if I can focus on that nice and deep belly breath. In and out. One. Two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine. Ten. And release it back to the middle. Then I'm going to flex it to the right. So easing my way down on the right side. This time, as you breathe into the band, I think you're breathing into that left side of the band the most. So I'm going to inhale one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Nice deep breath. Eight, 
nine, ten. Easing your way back to the middle. And then we're going to repeat to the left this time. So I'm going to flex it to the left. And then again, see if you can especially expand the right side of the waist, the right side of the body. Inhaling one. Two. Three. Four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. Ten. And ease it back. I'm going to undo the band, pushing the band to one side, allowing the belly, <clears throat> the ribcage to really expand out. So you should be feeling a little bit easier to breathe without the band squashing the midsection, squashing the waist. So I'm going to try and still focus on that breath. But these times, see if I can try and Work into the laser too. I'm going to start going to a little knee lift. So same as usual, if I need a little support, I can use my hands around the leg if I'm seated. Or I'm just going to use the band around the back of the leg if I'm seated or if I'm laying down. As I don't want to strain my shoulders to try and reach for the leg. And then I'm just going to start the flexing from the right hip. So I want to try and get the right foot to lift away from the ground. And then I'm going to pop it back down. So I'm going to try and lift it away. And then back. So imagine the leg to be like a little balloon. I'm going to inhale through the nose, inflate my balloon, let the balloon float. And then exhale out of the nose or out of the mouth, and then just let the balloon deflate, the leg drop back. Four. Five. Again, relaxing the jaw, relaxing the neck. Six. Seven. Eight, nine, ten, and releasing down. Relaxing the right leg, I'm going to try the same thing with the left. So placing the back around at the back of the leg if I feel that I need that little extra guidance and support and then again imagine your left leg like a big balloon i'm going to inhale i'm going to inflate the balloon let it float and then exhale i'm going to deflate it and let it come down two three four Five, six, seven, eight, nine. Last one. Ten. And 
releasing down, relaxing the hip, but releasing the leg. Hopefully, a little bit more connection, right and left leg. I'm going to go back to the right leg. And then if you're using the band, grabbing hold of the band with your left hand. So I'm going to cross over. As this time, I'm going to let my right leg and my left arm inflate and float up together. So I'm going to take a deep breath in, imagine the leg and the arm inflating and lifting, and then exhale, I'm just going to let them deflate and come down. I'm going to let the arm and the leg inflate and lift, and then deflate and come down. Three. Four. Five. Six. Little lift, a big lift, doesn't matter. Seven, think of those two balloons floating out and then deflating and coming down. Nine. Ten. And relax, so relaxing the arm, relaxing the leg. Then I'm going to cross over in the other direction. So left leg and then right arm together. I'm going to inhale and then again think of the leg expanding, the arm expanding and then coming up. Exhale, I'm just going to let them deflate down. Two. Three. Four. Noticing if there is any difference between this side and the other. Maybe the movement a little bit more relaxed, or maybe a little bit stiffer, a little bit heavier. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. And releasing, relaxing the shoulder, relaxing the legs. I need to be more connection between the upper and the lower body. I'm going to change the direction of the movement. I'm going to, again, focus on one leg at a time. I'm going to stick to my right. So bending the knees, Walking the feet and the knees nice and close together. I'm going to start opening my right leg out to the right. It's the same as usual. As the leg opens to the side, see if you can picture two movements. I'm not just pushing the leg sideways. I'm pushing the leg side, but I can imagine the thigh bone turning out to allow that movement to the side and then turning back in and then coming back to the starting position. So I'm going to turn and open, and then I'm going to turn back and close. So see if I can picture that very subtle, very little movement happening into the hip joint as the leg open and closes. Same as you did for the lifting. Little movement, big movement, it doesn't matter. If I need a little assistance this time, I'm just going to push the leg out using my hand, guiding it out. And then if I need a little help the other way, I'm just going to push it back in again. Five. Four. Oh. 
three. Two. Last one. And release it back. Relaxing the hip. I'm going to practice the same thing on the left side. So same as I did on the right. Picturing the movement. I'm pushing the leg to the side. But I can also picture the thigh bone turning out as I open. And then turning in as I close back to the center. Two. And coming back. Using the hand to help me guide the leg if I need to. Three. Four. Five, six, seven, eight. Nine. Ten. And release it back. Adjusting the legs, adjusting the hips. I feel <clears throat> a little bit more controlled, right and leg. Left to the hip, it feels a little bit warmer to the movement. I'm going to see if I can combine the upper body, so same as I did with the lifting. This time I'm going to work the same side. So picture an imaginary string that goes from your right hand to your right leg. I'm going to pull the string out and then take the leg out with me. Then I'm going to pull the string in, bring the leg back. So I'm going to pull the string out. I'm going to open the arm, open the leg on the right side, and then pull it back in, closing the leg, closing the arm. Three, opening. <coughs> and closing. If I'm seated, keeping the arm low, as the arm will tend to get quite heavy, so the shoulder and the neck might start to get stiff, so making sure that the movement feels easy, feels loose. If I'm laying down, taking the arm up a little bit high, see if I can get a nice opening through the shoulder, a nice opening into the hip, and then coming back. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten and releasing back, releasing the hip, relaxing the shoulder. I'm going to try the same thing with the left side. So again, letting the string going from your left hand to your left leg. I'm going to pull that string out. I'm going to let the knee open to the left, and then pull the string back and close the knee back to the middle. So I'm going to pull it out to, to open, and then pull it into close. Three, open. And close. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. 
and release it back. Releasing the shoulder, relaxing the leg. So it's a little bit more more. Movement in and out. I'm going to go back to the right leg and then this time I'm going to try and mix the movements together. So I'm going to go into little circles, letter shapes. It doesn't matter. What I want is to try and get as much movement into the hip joint as possible. So I'm going to use the band around the right leg again. If I feel that I need a little support, and then imagine to have a pencil stuck to the tip of the right knee. I'm just going to start drawing with that pencil in front of me. So I could draw circles, I could draw spirals, I could draw letters, I could draw numbers, I could write my name. I'm just playing with the different directions. I'm trying small movements, see if I can go for slightly bigger ones. To notice if the hip tends to maybe catch or click. I'm just going to try and avoid the position where it clicks. So as I get close to that position, I'm just going to pay a little bit more attention and then see if I can gradually get rid of that clicking. So making the movement smoother, making the movement better. So again, noticing the leg, the leg is going in all the possible direction, up, down, left, right, quarter to the right, quarter to the left up to the left, quarter to the right. <coughs> it's trying to cover all the possible direction. See if you can, same as you did for the opening and closing, picture the movement through your thigh bone. So see if you can think of the thigh bone also internally, externally rotating into the hip joint as the leg is moving up and down, left and right, across, the top to bottom, and then the other way. Four. Three, two, one, and relax in that leg. Same thing to the left to side. So imagine that pencil strap to the tip of the knee. See you can start the drawing with that pencil. So shapes, letters, numbers, just random movements. So just a test of the range. Does the movement feel easier, harder? Is this like heavier, lighter to move? Is there a particular direction where I feel that the leg doesn't really like going there or it feels really restricted going there? Five. Four. Three. Two. Two. Last one. And releasing back, relaxing the hip, releasing the leg. There's more movement into the hip joint. I'm going to get arms and legs again to play together. So stepping the feet just a little bit wider, especially if you're sitting up. I'm going to try and bring them a little bit closer to the chest. So what I want is for the feet to tucking ever so slightly. And then coming forward into the hips, I'm going to swing the arms to the front and then pushing weight into the feet as if I was trying to stand up. And then I'm going to drop down. So I'm going to swing to stand and then I'm going to drop. I'm going to swing to stand and then I'm going to drop. If I'm lying down, I'm going to throw my arms up and my hips to the two. So I'm going to drive up and then I'm going to come down. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine, last one, and release and down. Relaxing the legs, releasing the hips. If you're laying down, maybe having the knees to the chest and in the back of the leg, a little bit, the back of the hips to the lower back, and just a little bit of a rocking, a little bit of a stretch. 
And then when you're ready to release, dropping the feet down, rolling over onto your side, and in your own time, pushing yourself up into sitting. Finding your comfortable seated position, so setting the legs whichever way works better for your hips, works better for the balance, leaning against the chest sofa, just making sure that it doesn't move. If I need support, or using my hands by the side to help me support myself. Trying to create that lift through the belly. And then once then you feel that you've got a nice good seated position, so you can think of lengthening the all of the front line. So I'm going to start lifting from the belly, lifting from the chest. I'm going to let the shoulders drop behind and then lifting through the chin, lengthening to the front of the throat. I'm going to look up, I'm going to look back. And then I'm going to release, coming forward, letting the chin drop down, the shoulders come forward, rolling your way down as far as you feel comfortable. And then back up in reverse again, extending up, trying to create space at the front, across the front of the chest, and down the neck into the throat. And then I'm going to release, come forward, rounding the shoulders, dropping the head, curling my way down gradually. Last time. Opening up that front line, lifting up, looking forward, looking up, looking back. And then releasing back to the front. One hand to the belly, one hand to the back. Thank you, Val. Give yourself a clap on that. Any question or anything as usual, please say. Remember, you need to unmute.